I wonder if four years on, Patrick Vilova could uh, upset the form book and uh, although qualifying for the final as the fastest loser, take a medal. I think she's going to find it very difficult, Alan, because she was out all last year with an Achilles injury. And of course, Joachim Cruz has found exactly the same this year in the, uh, the 800 hadn't been able to come back either. Two from East Germany, two from the Soviet Union, the Czech and the Cuban. And don't forget the young Yugoslav either. The women's 800 metres final. Two laps of the track and they break after the first bend. Young Yartu, the young Romanian, prominent there in the yellow vest. But as they break from the far side, it's Vaktel of East Germany and Kiro right in the center in the red shorts. Vaktel takes the lead. Kiro, very anxious to maintain a good position from an early stage, used their elbows then to force their way through into second, just ahead of the other East German, Vodars, who's third. Kratik Vilova on the curb at the moment in about fifth place. So the two East Germans, well placed. 315 is Vakdel, the slightly blonder of the two. 316 is Vodars. 56.30, John at the bell. Yes, it's certainly an honest race here, and uh, Kochelikova is going to find it very, very difficult. She's been out of form lately, and I don't think she's going to find it very, is going to be able to keep in contention here. But the East Germans are certainly trying to make it a 1 2, and the Cuban girl, the winner, big winners this year in the Pan Am Games, I think she looks very, very dangerous. And look at Kratik Vilibar as well. While the rest of the field were blown away by that sudden surge of pace by the two East Germans out front, Kratik Vilova wasn't. Vaktel takes over the lead from her teammate Godars. And Akiro is also well placed there in second. So it's East Germany, Cuba, East Germany, the Soviet Union, and Kratik Vilova seeming to tire, but we know how strong she is. And maybe we shouldn't write her off yet, though it's a big gap, surely, and she is out of the medals now as the fight takes place between the two East Germans. On the inside, Vaktel, nearest to us, Vodars. And it looks as though it's Vaktel who's going to get there, but no, Vodars is coming back at it again and just takes it. So it's East Germany gold, East Germany silver, and the Soviet Union take the bronze. It was a tremendous battle between those two at the finish, and I don't suppose anyone in East Germany will be too upset about the outcome because it's two medals for the East Germans. Vodars the winner from uh, Vactel and uh, all in all I think uh, we can say that Yalmila Kratok Vilova produced a splendid run there to uh, even figure in the closing stages and incidentally the East German has broken their 11 year old national record in this event so that really was a very splendid run indeed John. Well the East German coaches said they wouldn't bring any women or men here that couldn't equip themselves honourably and of course they've certainly proved this the last four or five weeks, while everybody else is on the European circuit racing, the East Germans have been in Mexico at the training camps, and it's certainly paying off. Vodal's a new East German record and the fastest time in the world this year. Personal best for Christina Vachtel in second, as for Gurina in third, and Anna Kiro gets a new American record. So to the men's triple jump final. In the first round, it's Alexandra Kovalenko. Oh, and a great jump by the Soviet athlete, ranked eighth all-time on the world list after jumping 17 metres 77 this season. As it stays low on the step and on the hop, lots of height on the final jump, just on the edge of the board, but it's a valid jump. It's a good one too. Opens up with 17 metres 38 in the first round. The European champion and record holder, Christo Markov of Bulgaria, looks even more wild than ever. But will he be wild enough to respond to the challenge in this triple jump? Headed at the moment at 17 metres 38 by Alexandra Kovalenko of the Soviet Union. Markov still just 22, but already with many major championships under his belt. Very fast, very long. Yes, it's a terrific jump. Terrific jump by Christo Markov. This is going to be quite a competition. Already of five of the valid jumps recorded, four of them have been over 17 metres, if we include this one, and certainly this was. Terrific performance. Absolutely ideal conditions, of course. Jumping perhaps into uh, a little bit of a head. No, perhaps the wind's behind them now. It's switched round. Very hot and tremendous performance by Markov. Wind, in fact, actually was a little bit over the limit. 2.2 metres per second, so 
Two metres is the allowable limit for record purposes. Centimetre or two to spare on the board and a tremendous jump is just being displayed to the crowd to reacting. 17 metres 70. Well, the pressure's certainly on Mike Conley in the second round here. 17.34 in the first round, currently in third place. But leading the world rankings. Oh, not a bad jump, but still lacking a bit of sparkle, not really getting that devastating speed on the runway that he's famous for. It's just a little bit stiff as he walks away, not getting that real spring and that real drive. A good long step, plenty of height in the jump, but lands a little short. 17 metres, 37 for Conley, so stays in third place. Slightly off balance as well. Drives through this third phase, but doesn't quite push as far as he should. But here's the leader in the triple jump. The brilliant 22-year-old Christo Markov. We've seen two jumps of him already. 17.70, then a no jump, but 17.73 in the second round is the clear lead. An absolutely magnificent form. A very fine competitor, too. Well, as I said before, he's got to watch out for Mike Conley's last jump. We'll follow it. But at the moment, he has uh, 35 centimetres to spare on the chasing group. But he'll be looking for more. He'll be looking even to get close to Willie Banks' world record, which stands at 17 metres 97. the crowd appreciate that it was uh, very close to the board but a white flag is raised and the wind speed is within the permissible limits at 1.6 meters per second so I think there's gonna be a lot of interest to see just how far he's jumped this is triple jumping at near perfection really striding out there look at that leg shoot at the end it must be close to the world record flag 1797 remember is that and he also holds the European record at 17 meters 81. Now then, anxious moment. The crowd been following this triple jump. Look at that. That's as close as you can get to the board, really, surely. Only about a centimeter off. And a tense moment indeed. I think Mark will be interested. Yes, 17 meters 92. Of course, that's the lead in the championship best. It also adds 11 centimeters to his European record and was within five centimeters of Willie Banks' world record. The second finest jump of all time. Conditions, of course, in this stadium, absolutely ideal. That triple jump runway, like the track, is hard. But uh, it may cost the triple jumpers in terms of injuries if they were trained on it too much, but it's ideal for competition. Let's look again at one of the finest jumps we've ever seen. Christo Markov. And that moves Markov five centimeters ahead of Conley on the world list. This is the last chance for Conley. You know he has second, but he scrambled into that. He messed up his last couple of strides. He knew it wasn't a good jump. 17 meters, 67, improves by just two centimeters, but he's well, well short. He was second in the Olympic Games and now settles for second in the World Championships. A bitter moment, really, for a fine, fine jumper. The greatest long jump and triple jump combination expert in the world, but just not sparking today. The technique is there, but somehow just not getting the bite into his jumping. It's a new European record for Markov, 17 metres 92, the second furthest in history ahead of Conley and Sakharikin of the Soviet Union just coming through the pack to take the bronze medal.